This is my second video on the Emirates ESP32 S3 AMOLED with a 1.8 inch FT3168 touch display. And today you guys are going to learn a lot of new things. For example, how to display time and date on the screen in a simple way. You will also learn how to work with multiple screens and switch between them. I will show you how to create custom fonts and then use those fonts to make a digital watch. And not just a digital watch, we will also build an analog watch which will teach you even more new concepts like how to use image widgets and animate them. The hour, minute and second hands you see along with the watch background are all image files. Now, you might be wondering this development board doesn't even have an RTC. So how are we accessing and displaying the real time clock and date? Well, for that, I'm using pool.ntp.org and I will explain it in more detail later in this video. So guys, here is my template code. I have already explained this template code in part 1 in detail. Now, to access and display the time and date, I will need to modify this code. So, I will be back after making those changes. I have added these three header files and I have also included the Wi-Fi credentials, SSID and password. Make sure to replace them with your own Wi-Fi credentials. To make sure my ESP32 gets the accurate time, first I need to tell it where to find it on the internet. For that, I'm using pool.ntp.org, which is a standard address for network time protocol servers. That's what this NTP server line sets up. Now, the time we get from the internet is usually standard UTC time, but I want the display to show the local time for Pakistan, which is 5 hours ahead. So, I need to tell the system that offset in seconds, 5 hours works out to 18,000 seconds, which is the value I have assigned to UTC offset in seconds. Lastly, since Pakistan doesn't currently observe daylight setting time, I have set the daylight offset second to zero, ensuring the time doesn't automatically adjust for some hours. Some global variables for time and date. After synchronizing time from the NTP server, I break down the time information into individual components for easy use throughout the project. I extract the current hour, minute and second as well as the current day, month and year. After that, I have saved the time and date information into time str and date str and then I am printing it to the serial monitor. Let's upload the program and see if we can access the current time and date. Great, we have successfully accessed the current time and date. Now we need to display it on the screen. For that, let's open the Squareland Studio. In part 1, we ended the video at this point. Now, to display the time and date, we need two labels. I will use this label to display the time. So, first, let's rename this label to LBL time. Next, I will duplicate this label and use it to display the date. Then, let's update the text of the labels to time and date. Now, save the project and export the UI files. After that, go to the UI files folder, copy all the generated files and paste them into the same folder where your arduino.ino file is located. Now, open the main arduino.ino file. If you open the ui underscore screen 1.c file, you will see a lot of styling code has been generated for both the time and date labels. We will use these two labels to display the actual time and date. Let's upload the code. This was the simplest method to display the time and date. Next, we will build a digital watch and after that, an analog watch. To make the digital watch, we'll use custom fonts. I have already downloaded 7 segment font. You can download and use any font you like. Personally, I prefer the 7 segment style font, so I will use this. Let's start by adding a second screen. On this screen, we will display the hours, minutes and seconds in a slightly different style. So, let's go ahead and import the 7 segment font by clicking on 8 file into assets. As you can see, our 7 segment font has been successfully added to the assets. Now, using this font, we will create 3 different fonts. To do this, go to the font tab and let's name it font hour. 
After that, we need to select the font size. You can choose any size you prefer. For ours, I want to use a large font size. 250 should be fine for now. Then click on the create button. As you can see, our first font has been successfully created. Later on, if you want, you can change the font size. I will demonstrate that in a moment. In the same way, we need to create two more fonts. Let's say I set the size of the second font to 150. The font used to display seconds, let's say I want to change its size. I want to keep it smaller than both of the previous ones, so let's go with 45. After changing the font size, click on the modify button. Now all three fonts are ready. Let's go ahead and add three labels and assign each one the font we created. After assigning the fonts, let me quickly set the positions of the labels. Now let's add a fourth label to display the date. For this label, we'll use a built-in font so that you get an idea of how to use different fonts at the same time. Now let's save the project and export the UI files. Go to the UI files folder, copy all the generated files and paste them into the same folder where your main Arduino.ino file is located. This time, you can see that it has also loaded all three fonts that we created for hours, minutes, and seconds. And here is screen two. On screen two, we designed the digital watch. We used four labels on this screen for hours, minutes, seconds, and the date. I've given proper names to all these labels, which makes it much easier to find and identify them. That's why I emphasized widget naming in part one. Anyway, I will be back after modifying the main code. This code converts integer time values, hour, minute, second, into two digit strings using sprintf. It then updates three LVGL label widgets, UI LBL hour, UI LBL minutes, UI LBL seconds to display the formatted time values. And this instruction prints the date. I just remembered I haven't applied screen gestures yet. So let's go back to SQLine Studio and apply the screen gestures. Otherwise, we won't be able to switch between the two screens. Select screen one, then click on add event. Set the trigger type to gesture left. Set the action type to change screen. Click the add button. Select screen two. Now select screen two and follow the same steps. This time choose gesture right as the trigger and set screen one as the target. Now let's save the project and export the UI files. After that, let's go ahead and upload the program. Our digital watch is ready and it looks so cool. You saw how even without an RTC module, you can easily access and use the date and time from the internet. To create an analog watch, I have designed a simple watch face in Photoshop. Along with that, I have also created the hour, minute and second hand. I've saved all four elements as separate .png images. So let's open SQLine Studio and start building our analog watch. Let's add a third screen. Before I forget, let's quickly add the screen change event so that we can switch between the last two screens as well. We'll follow the same steps that we used earlier for screen one and screen two. Let's quickly play the simulation and check if the screen change events are working. Great, it's working. Click the add file into assets to import all the images. All the images have been successfully added. 
While screen 3 is selected on the inspector tab, go to the background image and select watch background.png. We are using this background image as the watch face. Now go to the basic widgets and select image. On the right side, select watch our hand.png. Now repeat the same steps for a minute and second hands. We are done with the settings. Now let's save the project and export the UI files. You can see all the files are successfully loaded. I'll be back after modifying the code. You only need these three lines of code and that's it, your analog watch is ready. You may have noticed that I made a small change. I have removed the seconds hand. Instead, I'm now displaying the seconds inside this red rectangle. By the way, you can also use this rectangle to display the date if you want. Let's upload the code. So, that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.